Buongiorno amici del giornale della vela, giornata molto particolare per noi perché quello che vedete alle mie spalle è il trimarano di François Gabart, siamo a Genova e oggi proveremo a scoprire un po' di cose su questo piccolo mostro oceanico, piccolo non tanto perché siamo più di 30 metri. Allora, siamo in buona compagnia perché, non so se lo riconoscete, questo signore alle mie spalle, Alex Bellini. Ciao! Alex, cosa facciamo stamattina? Stamattina ci facciamo un giro su questo mostro eh, che già da lontano ha il suo fascino. Adesso che siamo a bordo, tra l'altro, sembra di farsi un viaggio nel futuro. Io non sono molto pratico, eh, poi mi dovrai insegnare tu esattamente eh, le cose, io amo la lentezza. Eh, qui siamo un po' più Qua veloci. Qua siamo esattamente sullo spettro, sul, sull'estremo opposto dello spettro, però in comune c'è il mare e secondo me ci divertiremo un sacco. SVR Laser Team. We launched it last summer in 2021. This is an ultimate boat, 32 meters uh, long, 23 meters wide, mast, a little bit more than uh, 35 meters. And this is a foiling boat. We are just uh, very close to the foil. Yeah. Uh, so with these foils, we manage now to fly above water. Uh, with not too much winds. Just now it's a little bit Uh, slow the wind is like 7-8 knots so we don't manage but we need just 11-12 knots of wind and we managed to fly and uh, this is wonderful wind machine that can cross uh, Atlantic or sail around the world in a uh, few days so I mean we work a lot with the foils they are bigger managed to fly a little bit earlier Uh, then we get also a, a good speed and we manage to have average speed better than with the other one. We work a lot uh, with aero of the boat because when you're flying fast, the wind in front of you, the apparent wind is, could be quite strong. Mm -hmm. We're talking about 60-70 knots of apparent wind, it's more than 100 kilometers. Uh, and in this case, the aero of the boat is really important, so we work a lot. Uh, on this and with the cockpit with uh, is uh, integrated uh, as much as we can so we have something we have a cockpit where we're working with a good aero and it's um, also a good protection for the safety of the crew when we are sailing so it's uh, quite interesting for us to have this uh, new concept and uh, I think it's uh, it's really yeah it's really good when you're sailing fast and uh, You still have, uh, you can steer the boat, drive the boat from, uh, from this small part. You see well what's uh, in front of you and at the same time you're, you're protected. Questa è la nostra postazione. Le velocità sono intorno ai 20-25 nodi con circa 9 di vento. Ok, questo pistone che vedete quadrato collegato a questo grosso cavo di tessile è collegato a quelle sarti volanti lì che regolano i movimenti dell'albero sia in rotazione che nel basculamento laterale intanto ci arrivano delle docce e il foil sopravvento che quando la barca si raddrizza tocca l'acqua e quindi ci spara un po' di spray questi sono i timoni non so se si nota il timone a T Appena sotto la superficie dell'acqua c'è la parte orizzontale, i cosiddetti elevator, 
che aiutano la barca a staccarsi dall'acqua, lavorano in coppia con i foil e i flap dei timoni, eccolo che esce un attimo dall'acqua, i flap dei timoni sono regolabili per ottimizzare l'assetto di volo in base ovviamente alle condizioni di vento e di onda. Eccoci qua sulla prua di Laser Pig, vedete c'è questa struttura che serve sia per reggersi quando diciamo François sarà a prua a lavorare, sia per tenere al riparo questo grande pistone. Adesso li portiamo un po' più avanti. La prua di laser. Qui vengono anche posizionate diciamo, le vele in queste zone, i sacchi velici prima dei cambi. Quindi questa zona è stata appositamente lasciata diciamo, scavata con dei volumi liberi per consentire appunto di lavorare. I mean, what's the good thing with the fall is why we're using the fall, why we're flying. I love flying, but uh, the thing is when you're flying, the, um, the foil um, are not uh, slowing down the boat because as the hull is not touching water, there is nothing to stop the boat. So with the same energy in the, in the sail, you manage to go faster. For a competitor like me, it's perfect. Uh, you go faster, you can try to win races or break a curve. But uh, I think it's an interesting uh, concept because uh, even on a motorboat, for example, if you manage to fly, you can go at the same, same speed and use less energy. So this is really something we're working hard on, on this boat, of course, but also on the other boat. We, uh, with my team, we, we built an uh, electric, uh, electrical uh, catamaran uh, with uh, uh, not a sailing boat. And uh, because it's flying, it's an uh, it's electric uh, motor and it, uh, it managed to have a, a good uh, autonomy without, um, without having uh, a classic uh, engine. Hope so, yes, that's a goal. Uh, that's the next race uh, in November, so it's a solo, uh, solo ended race from Saint Malo. In, uh, on the north of France to uh, Guadeloupe okay. in Caribbean and uh, that's, uh, that's clearly the goal of the year, yeah. Yeah, that's also uh, one of the things we want to do in the next years. I mean, this boat is down for uh, going far away and uh, going fast far away. So I will say that this is the ultimate challenge is to sail around the world as fast as possible. Uh, so I don't know when we will go for it, we're still uh, developing the boat and uh, so much to learn uh, and to develop, but uh, for sure when, uh, when we're ready, we will try to, to do it. So that's really interesting what's happening, because when I'm talking with the fallen and the flying boats as we are now on the Chilemarron is Vers Arctic, but These folks are just doing a revolution on the sailing and it's uh, arriving to all the class and all the boats and even on Imoka class. And now we have this big fall on Imoka and the speed of the boat are incredible. We're working, uh, my team is working with uh, Apivia and uh, Charlie Dallon. Mm -hmm. So we were already involved in the last uh, Vendée with, uh, with Charlie. We're working now to build him his new boat that will be launched next year. So Apivia 2 and uh, Charlie will do the next uh, Vendée Globe. We're doing our, our best to have the best uh, boat as possible and I'm pretty sure that Charlie will be one of the skippers just uh, going for the, for the win or trying to win this, uh, uh, this race. So in a way I will be involved in the next Vendée Globe with him and uh, Apivia. 
Um, not as a skipper, but uh, with my team, and uh, this is really interesting because uh, it's I, I love sailing on the Ul team, and it's really what I what I love. But uh, what's happening in Imoka class is also wonderful, and uh, it's good to be involved and to try to make this boat uh, faster. <laughs>